In last week's video, I showed you how carbon fiber reinforced filaments could become embedded in your skin just by handling them. Today we're doing a follow-up video to answer some of the questions that you all had in the comments. We're going to be taking a closer look at fiberglass reinforced filament. I'll also be taking a close-up look at some 3D printed parts that are made out of carbon fiber reinforced filament to see if it carries some of the same risks in terms of transferring fibers into your hands. So let's hop over to the microscope and take a closer look at these materials. This episode is brought to you by Squarespace. So let's take a look at some printed parts under the microscope. It looks like most of the fibers are oriented along the lines of extrusion, but there's a couple spots like right here. It looks like there's a fiber just kind of sticking out. Now if we move over to this side of the part, I actually applied a clear coat here. So now all of these fibers should be completely encapsulated. And this only took about one minute to do. We're going to run some more experiments. First we're going to take this part and rub the clear coated side of it onto my skin. And I don't think I should have any transfer here. Really not much for fibers coming off. Now let's go over to the smaller half of it that isn't treated with super glue. Just rubbing it on my skin to see if any fibers come loose. Just sawing it back and forth to see, just like accelerated handling, and, and yeah, there's fibers coming off that as well. I don't like that. <laughs> okay, so we've clearly established that there's a problem when handling these materials, whether it's the filament or printed parts, you have to be cautious about the fibers coming off of these things. Probably the simplest and cheapest way of applying a clear coat on small parts like this, if you have a tube of super glue around, you can just use that. We just apply it to the surface and uh, wet everything down and that will encapsulate all your fibers. You don't have to worry about them coming loose. Just like that everything's coated in super glue. You can use any other type of clear coat. You can use epoxy, you can use spray paint, you can use basically anything. So you don't have to completely avoid using these materials. I just think that it's time we've stepped up to the same level of standard that a majority of carbon fiber parts in the wild use. This has got a glossy clear coat on it so that all those fibers are encased. I've also invested in a macro lens setup. I'll be using today's sponsor Squarespace to upload those super high resolution macro shots because when I upload my pictures to Squarespace I can get really high resolution images and there's no compression or degradation. It's easier than ever to start a website with Squarespace, whether you use one of their professionally designed templates or their AI-based layout generator. So if you want to learn more and get started with your free trial, head to squarespace.com, and once you're ready to launch your website, go to squarespace.com slash NathanBuildsRobots to get 10% off your first website or domain purchase. Pop quiz, I want you to try and identify each one of these filaments based on what they look like under the microscope. The filaments on the top were samples that were snapped, just like this. I just take the filament and then I bend it and snap it. The samples on the bottom were prepared by cutting them with a pair of pliers like this. Sample A is white. You can see a bunch of these shards sticking out of it. Sample B looks like it's some kind of fuzzy black material. Sample C is Similar to sample B, sample D is this kind of skin tone colored one. It kind of looks like there's some fibers in it running along the grain. Sample E is this charcoal colored one in the middle. Again, it looks like there's some fibers in there. Sample F is this really shiny one. It's just shiny black material. Sample G is the one in the middle of the screen right now. It looks like there's some little flecks of shiny material. Sample H is this three colored filament. It kind of has a sheen to it. And then sample I, there's some kind of jagged edges here where it was cut, but it just appears to be a white homogeneous material. That's all of our samples. Why don't you guess in the comments what samples A through I are based on what we can see at this magnification. All right, so now we'll go over these materials one more time. If we take a look at it edge on, you can see these fibers just sticking out of the part. The human hair is significantly larger than the glass fibers. This stuff does have a pretty good surface finish, so what the heck, let's give it a try. This stuff feels much smoother. This glass fiber doesn't appear to be too much of a problem. At least this filament manufacturer, whatever their process they're using, is encapsulating the ends of those fibers quite a bit better. Here's sample B loaded up into the microscope. And just to give you some context for the size of these little fibers. This right here is a human hair. 
So you can see the carbon fibers are maybe a twentieth the diameter of a human hair. Your body is used to dealing with hair, but these carbon fibers are an order of magnitude smaller. This is a Bamboo Lab PACF. So let's move from sample B to sample C. This sample is from Creality. This is a hyper PLA CF formulation. And I'm not sure what to make of the fiber sizes. They look like they're a little bit finer than what you have in this Bamboo Lab PACF stuff. So smaller fibers. And I also noticed if we look at this edge on, there's almost no bubbles in this filament. Whereas when I was looking at the Bamboo Lab stuff, there's a lot of bubbles in it. And here's the sheared edge where I cut these with the clippers. I assume the smaller the fibers are, the more hazardous they are. But anything at this scale is probably gonna be, uh, I would think, a major hazard if you were to inhale this kind of stuff. Looking at the sidewalls of this Creality filament, it looks a little bit cleaner than what we had on the Bamboo Lab filament. Now I'm really curious if the finer particles and the apparently smoother surface finish of this Creality filament is going to shed particles in the same way that the Bamboo Lab filament did. So I'll just run a little experiment right here. And yeah, that's, uh, that's, uh, <laughs> that's just as bad, if not worse. So even though the filament looks like it's smoother, it's still got plenty of particles to give off. It looks like these ones are just on the surface of my skin. They're not fully embedded yet. I'm gonna see if I can get them off with some tape. Pull it off. It looks like this trick works to get some of the fibers off, but I really wouldn't count on it as a reliable way to get rid of these splinters. Like really, this is just gonna stay embedded in my skin until it falls off. And when I was saying that your skin sheds, this is the kind of stuff that I'm talking about. Like sheets of your skin will just fall off as you go about your day. And hopefully these carbon fibers will be carried with them. Unless it gets into the dermis layer, in which case those fibers might just stay there for a nice long time and have to be surgically removed. Sample D. This is a wood fiber reinforced filament. So in this wood fiber filament, you can see these little bubbles. There might be some air trapped inside of the actual wood fibers. That's probably going to hurt your tensile strength and stiffness of the material. Let's move on to the one next to it. This is another black filament, and this one also has quite a few bubbles in it. I don't see any long fibers sticking out of it though, and that's because this is also a wood fiber reinforced filament. So despite the surface being pretty rough looking, similar to the carbon fiber filaments, I don't think this is gonna pose much of a hazard to you. Let's move on to filament F. You can see it's just really smooth and glassy. There's no real signs of uh, any fibers in there. And it looks like it was very ductile into failure. If you look at the surface finish of this material, it's nice and smooth. This stuff is a fire retardant polycarbonate blend from Polymaker. Looks like some pretty nice stuff. And then to the right of that, we have sample G. This is a Prusament Galaxy Black PLA. There's these little flakes, what looks like glitter in there. And if we look at the cut ends, we can see when those pliers were pinching through the material, it exposed some of those flakes, but they look like they're really embedded into the material. To the right of that, we have filament H. It looks like a nice sherbet or something. This is a Sunlu PLA tricolored filament. And our last filament, filament I, this is just a plain white PLA. So I think one of the conclusions we can draw here is that not all fiber reinforced plastics are created equal. Depending on their processing parameters, more or less of those fibers are gonna be available at the surface of the filament. Now it's not just a matter of handling these materials, it's also printing them. So when you're running your printers, you've got extruder gears biting into the sidewalls of that filament. Those gears are gonna pull some of those fibers off and they'll get loose and go all over the place. Then add to that, you have massive part cooling fans that are circulating air all over. Those can loft those fibers up into the air and just blow them away. In the latter half of this video, I wanna introduce some other concerns with different technologies. This is HP's Multijet Fusion. This is a powder-based process that uses black ink to selectively heat and center the material and basically the black ink causes this white powder to absorb more energy 
and that's how they can selectively melt the powder and create your 3D printed parts. If we look at these powders on the monitor here, you can see there's tons of them. They're just a bunch of tiny little particles. But the problem I have with this process is that these white powder pieces on top can come loose. So I just applied this piece of tape, pressed it onto the part, and peeled it off. You can see these are all the little particles that I pulled off of that powder part. And there's just thousands and thousands of these little particles that came off of the surface. Any of these powder-based processes I would also be concerned about because basically they 3D print them and then they take them over to a bin where they try and get all the loose powder off. There's usually going to be some powder left over on the part. Now if you spent more time in the sandblasting unit and getting as much powders off as possible, then sure you could remove more and more of this stuff. But I think the better solution is to either clear coat or paint these parts or as I saw in a factory tour at Zometry, they actually have a vapor smoothing machine and that'll melt all the stuff on the surface of this part and get it to be one solid piece of plastic. I picked up this fidget toy from Bontech at uh, Rapid TCT this year and it's just a nice little demonstration of their tightening and loosening mechanism for their extruders. But this is an SLS produced part and when I put this under the microscope, you can see it looks quite a bit different. Instead of having all those little loose powder particles on the surface, everything looks really quite smooth. Uh, I think I can actually get some of those particles off actually. Let me, uh, let me get a new piece of tape. Yeah, it looks like it's got little pieces of plastic in there. So, I mean, there's a lot of stuff about 3D printing where you don't want to just assume it's safe. If there's not going to be government regulations on this stuff, it's up to you to protect yourself. If you see something that looks like it could be harmful, do your own investigations, do your own research. There's some really basic stuff that could be done, standardizing the 3D printing processes into things that are more safe and don't shed particles. What I like about FDM, just using standard materials, is that they're pretty much finished products when they come off of the machine. You don't have to worry about any powder or anything like that, unless you're printing with carbon fiber reinforced filaments. So one last thing I wanted to try out is to see if flame polishing can fix this, so let's just take a look. And I'll try the same on this little Bontech fidget spinner. Well, maybe there's some stuff left over still. I don't think this is near the same health risk as something like asbestos is. That stuff is truly diabolical. It splinters into smaller pieces when it gets into your skin, so it like you get stuck with one little piece and it turns into like a hundred little pieces all crawling throughout your skin. Carbon fiber doesn't exhibit the exact same behavior, but again, it's these really small, pokey objects. You want to keep control over them, make sure you're not breathing in too much of it. The other thing of concern that I found out in the last couple days of doing research on this topic, some filaments actually use carbon fiber nanotubes as an ESD agent. So the little nanotubes are conductive and they can help dissipate static electricity in your 3D printed parts, which is really useful for electronics and that kind of stuff. But you don't want to be exposing yourself to a bunch of carbon fiber nanotubes unnecessarily. There's emerging research that shows that that can be harmful to your health. And these carbon fiber nanotubes are like orders of magnitude smaller than those carbon fiber filament pieces. Nanotubes are 20 nanometers across, and even if I got some in to look at under this microscope, I don't think I'd be able to see them. Like you need special equipment to be able to see that kind of stuff. I wouldn't recommend using carbon fiber nanotube filaments. Something that we really need to start pushing for in this industry is knowing exactly what's in our filament, because even regular PLA, if they have additives in it that are unlabeled or unidentified, then when they're heated up and produce little soot particles from being printed, I mean that's what this black stuff is on the nozzles when you're running your 3D printer, that's like the leftovers from uh, plastic boiling off and turning into denser and denser hydrocarbons until they look black. And also you can see like little pieces of dust build up on your parts sometimes. That's just smoke that's been deposited on your parts. And they're essentially tiny little nanoparticles of soot that come off of your 3D printer hot end as you're printing. These also present health risks. That soot is basically made out of whatever your plastic turns into or little bits of the plastic itself. 
and they're extremely small. You just don't want to be inhaling smoke and other things unnecessarily. So ventilation is key, filtration is key, making sure you're not using your 3D printers in areas where you don't want to be contaminated with soot and that kind of stuff. Now, some level of exposure to soot and pollutants is unavoidable. I mean, living in the modern era, gas engines are running, they're producing soot and all sorts of stuff. I don't want to scare you off and think that, oh no, 3D printing is bad. Just be aware of the risks and know that it actually does produce stuff that gets released into the environment. And if you're in an enclosed space, then you need to be considerate of how you ventilate or filter the air that you're breathing. Also, when you're printing and you have a lot of retractions, those little retractions and moves and stringing, that turns into little fibrous threads that float around in the air. But also wearing like polyester clothing, that produces little fibers that float around in the air, a lot of which you inhale. So personally, I wear a ton of cotton. Cotton's great. <laughs> Why do you need to be wearing plastic? Last thing I want to look at is I got some of these filter papers. Like if you're a smoker, then you should be familiar with these. This is the fiberglass piece that's in the end of the cigarette. Okay, so it looks like these little threads that are embedded into the, uh, the filament are smaller in diameter than whatever is in this filter paper. Just verifying that this is glass. I'm just gonna, oh, oh, I don't know what, is this glass? Ah, according to the internet, Cigarette filters are usually made from plastic cellulose acetate fiber, but also from paper or activated charcoal. I always assumed that those were fiberglass, but I guess not. So there's a lot more to learn. I really like the comments that I got in my last video. There's so much like personal experiences of people working in fiberglass maintenance and carbon fiber layup shops and all sorts of other fields where they have safety precautions that they take when they're dealing with fibers. People had a lot of common experiences to what I had where you notice the fibers building up on your hands when you're just handling these carbon fiber prints. So I'm not the first to have noticed it. It was news to me when I learned about it, but I think we're at a point where we need to have a more open conversation about what we need to know about these filaments and things that we can do to make them safer. All right, there's a million other things I could talk about. I learned a ton about carbon fiber and it's just like so many great sources of information here on the internet. There's a lot of you experts out there that I think you guys need to speak up more. I'll gladly take your message and deliver it to more people since I have a platform and it's a great thing about having a YouTube presence like this. I wanna do deeper dives into this stuff. This is something that I just find really interesting and honestly, I don't like printing stuff that much. I'm really interested in designing printers. I'm interested in learning the science behind the printers. So uh, I think that's where my channel is gonna be going over the next year. It's gonna be less focused on product reviews and that kind of crap, and more on just like interesting stuff about 3D printer technology and working on my own designs. Um, I've got this printer over here that I've been working on. If you haven't heard of it, then uh, you can check out my previous video on the subject. And make sure to check out the article on my website hosted on Squarespace, which is today's sponsor. So thank you Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Remember that Nathan Builds Robots is the definitive source for 3D printing news. Make sure to print safe out there, everyone. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next episode. I have a ginormous air filter. Look at this thing. It's huge. And that is um, how I keep carbon fiber dust from building up if it gets in the air.